Okay, welcome. Uh, in this video, we'll consider this RC circuit uh, that has an input voltage, uh, uh, sinusoidal bearing input voltage. What we want to find out is how does the voltage across the capacitor uh, react to that input voltage? Okay, so uh, in the last set of exercises, we tried out uh, what is known as AC steady state analysis. In this case, we're going to do uh, how does the capacitor voltage uh, how does the voltage across the capacitor change as you change the frequency? Or we're looking at the frequency response of this RC circuit. In order to do that, first thing we want to do is find out what the transfer function is. And transfer function, typically written as H, is basically given by the ratio of the output phasor over the input phasor. Okay. Now, in order to do that, well, let's take a look at this circuit. Well, we see a RNSC in the frequency domain, the C has the capacitor has an impedance, and that impedance is equal to 1 over J omega C. So the impedance of the capacitor is 1 over J omega C. Impedance of the resistor is simply R. So using voltage divider, now V out can be written as uh, the impedance of the capacitor divided by. Uh, the resistor plus the impedance of the capacitor because these two are in series right here and that times the input voltage now the imp so if we rearrange this we get v out over v in and that is equal to impedance of the capacitor divided by r plus the impedance of the capacitor okay now this right here we said by definition was equal to the transfer function. So the transfer function is given by that ratio of the impedance of the capacitor divided by the sum of the impedances of the resistor and the capacitor. Now let's replace uh, our value of uh, one over J omega C for the impedance of the capacitor divided by R plus one over J omega C. Now here, now we see that there is omega here. So that we that basically means there is omega on the top and the omega on the bottom. That means the transfer function of this or the ratio of the output to the input. Or if you even look at the output voltage, we see that the output voltage is dependent on the frequency of the input signal, right? So the transfer function basically is, in fact, dependent on the uh, frequency of the input signal. Now what we'll do is we'll rearrange some of these terms and put it in a slightly uh, nicer form. So let's uh, do some algebraic manipulation to do that. Uh, so let's take the uh, denominator. So the numerator is still 1 over j omega c. The denominator, we can write it as r times j omega c plus 1 divided by j omega c. Now this j omega c and that j omega c right here they'll cancel and what we end up with is equal to one over one plus j omega r c so this right here is the transfer function now this transfer function since it is a complex uh, uh, proposition right here so there's a j here it's complex so that means this transfer function has both a magnitude and an angle. So let's find out what the magnitude and the angle are. So the magnitude of this transfer function, H, uh, so we'll write it as the magnitude of the transfer function H is equal to one over square root of one square, so which is one, plus omega RC square. Right, so that's the magnitude of h uh, because this uh, function right here is p plus jq and the magnitude of p plus jq is square root of p square which is one square plus q square which is omega rc whole square so that is the magnitude right there and the angle of h so i'll write down angle of h or the phase angle of h is equal to the angle of the top so the angle on the top is basically what uh, it's just a real number, so it's the real number one right here, 
Uh, so we can write that as zero degrees. So the angle on top is zero degrees. And then the, what's the angle at the bottom? Well, the angle at the bottom is given by the arc tangent of the Q over the P. In this case, Q is omega RC and uh, P is one. So the arc tangent of the imaginary component divided by the real component. Now, since this is one over that, we saw uh, when we we're doing phasors that if you have a complex number divided by another complex number, both in the phasor domain, the angle of the top minus the angle of the bottom gives you the overall angle. So in this case, angle of H is equal to the angle of the top, which is zero degrees, minus the angle of the bottom, which is arc tangent of omega RC divided by one. All right, so we can, we can basically rewrite this as the angle is given by zero degrees minus arc tangent of simply omega RC. So now we see that the magnitude, this is the magnitude right here, and the angle right here that we calculated both have the omega term in it. Uh, so the so the so this particular circuit that we had, the circuit responds to a a signal with a different frequency and the output changes uh, based on that frequency. So let's see what the magnitude uh, of the transfer function is when if let's say we had DC. DC means that the signal is not varying. In other words, the omega is equal to zero. So what happens if omega equals zero? If omega is closer to zero, if omega is equal to zero, then the transfer function equals one over square root of one plus, well, this whole term right here, since omega is equal to zero, goes to zero. So one over the square root of one basically gives us one. How about the phase angle? Well, the phase angle is dependent on the value of R and C, which we haven't specified yet, but if omega equals zero, then this is also equal to zero. So arctangent of zero. So the arctangent of zero is actually zero degrees. So if omega equals zero or DC, then we have a H factor, which is V out over V in. And sometimes it's also called the gain, meaning the output voltage is equal to the input voltage if this is equal to one. And the phase angle, meaning there's no shift between the output and the input, okay? So that's what this zero degrees means. Now what happens if omega is, if omega is a really large number? So let's say a really high frequency. Let's consider what happens if omega was really, really big. If omega was really, really big, we would get the magnitude h is equal to one over square root of a really big number. So one plus omega is really big already. So infinity square is also really, really big. So we have a really big number, one plus infinity square. We have a really big number on the bottom side. So even if I take a square root of that, that's still infinity. So overall, this number is going to be very close to zero. So if omega is really large, meaning if we have a high frequency signal, at this input, if the input signal was very, very high frequency, then we see that the transfer function says that the magnitude of the transfer function is getting closer to zero. In other words, the output voltage is almost zero at very high frequencies. How about the phase angle? Well, if I put in the phase angle, uh, we still have minus arc tangent. Omega is really, really large and the arctangent of a infinite value or a really big value is equal to uh, 90 degrees. And in this case, we have minus 90 degrees, okay? So that means the output voltage is completely out of phase, but the output voltage is almost zero because we have a gain of zero, okay? So you see that this particular RC circuit right here, if I look at the voltage across the capacitor, you see that the output voltage is equal to the input voltage when the frequency is low, okay, uh, uh, almost DC in our case, and the output voltage is zero because of the gain uh, 
uh, or the transfer function being zero, the output voltage is equal to zero for very, very high frequencies. Now, what happens if omega, let's say, if omega was equal to one over RC, let's see what happens. If omega is equal to one over RC, the magnitude of the transfer function becomes one over, uh, so omega is equal to RC, so, uh, oh, sorry, omega equals one over RC, so I have square root of one plus one over RC times RC whole square, and these cancel, so at the bottom I have one over square root of two, and the angle, if I calculate, will come out to be arc tangent of minus 10 arc tangent of uh, omega is 1 over rc so 1 over rc times rc is equal to 1 so arc tangent of uh, 1 is minus is 45 degrees so we have a negative sign there so we have minus 45 degrees now something here is important we saw that the output over the input ratio was 1 over square root 2 if omega equals 1 over rc okay so this particular value has a significance this particular value is called the cutoff frequency okay so this is called the definition of the cutoff frequency the cutoff frequency is basically defined as the uh, the frequency at which the output voltage becomes one over the square root of two of the maximum gain of the circuit a maximum gain of the circuit is equal to a one in this case Right, so so the circuit, the output voltage, the best it can be is equal to V in. In other words, the maximum gain or the maximum value of the transfer function is equal to one. So so the cutoff frequency is defined as that frequency which causes the transfer function to be equal to one over the square root of two of the main gain of the maximum gain. So in our case, wherever we have one over square root two, since our maximum gain is equal to one, that's called the cutoff frequency. So omega equals one over RC, that omega frequency is called the cutoff frequency, or we write that as omega C equals one over RC, okay? Now, if you really sit down and think about this, we have low frequencies up to this value being available at the output, and anything above that starts to be uh, closer and closer to zero. So if I was to draw what this would look like, so let me do that. So if I was to draw that, so here is a magnitude frequency plot and a phase angle frequency plot. So the magnitude was equal to one at uh, a really small number uh, for the value of omega. And we saw that the magnitude became one over square root of two. So let's see, one over square root of two is basically uh, 0.707. So, so basically what happens is if you were to draw a straight line uh, approximation for the transfer function, what we would get is a small S-shaped curve like this. And we would get closer and closer and closer to zero. Okay, so that's what the transfer function would look like. And in terms of the angle, if we started at zero degrees, at omega C, we're at nine minus 45 degrees. And at towards infinity, we had gotten close to minus 90 degrees. So basically the phase angle would look like this as well. Okay, now let's focus, uh, instead of the phase, let's just focus on the magnitude. This is basically saying that all frequencies up to omega c the ratio is equal to one uh, so any frequency input voltage that has a frequency of omega c or lower can be seen at the output okay but any frequency that has omega c and greater has diminishing magnitude and eventually you won't be able to see the frequency so in other words the circuit that we started out with which is the rc circuit with a voltage across the capacitor this circuit is passing or allowing low frequencies to pass through and not allowing higher frequencies to pass. So this particular type of circuit is called a low pass filter. Okay, it's called a low pass filter. Uh, it has a lot of use in getting rid of high frequency noise uh, and so forth. And in the next video, we'll take a look at what happens if I have the R and C swapped and look at the voltage across the resistor.